This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and as you requested, here's a smackdown between the 2017 Samsung Notebook 9 Pro 15-inch, the 15-inch HP Spectre X360, also 2017 model, and lastly, the Lenovo Yoga 720. They're all 15-inch convertibles with a rotating 360-degree hinge. They're all on the high end. They're above $1,000, but not too, too crazy either. We'll talk about pricing, so there's a lot of similarities. But there's also some important differences. We're going to talk about it now. Well, all three of these machines are lovely higher-end machines, and they're that new kind of unusual class, happily it's not unusual anymore, of 15-inch convertibles that work with digital pens. So those of you who want to do diagramming, artwork, that sort of thing, where more screen real estate is greatly appreciated, these are particularly attractive. And of course, if you're just looking for a nice 15-inch laptop with a touchscreen too, I know some of you are just still considering these anyway. So the HP Spectre X360, 15-inch, who I nicknamed Bob, best of the best, because really it was hard to beat Bob. I mean, this is a gorgeous design, and I think the, the gold is less gaudy than it was on the Spectre X2 on that big old hinge. I leave that up to you. I think it's an aesthetically pleasing machine. It's very rigid. It's very slim. And the $1,500 model that's most commonly available, particularly at Best Buy, who's been getting a lot of HP Spectre exclusives lately, the 15, that $1,500 model gets you a 4K display, a Core i7 15-watt Core i7 CPU. That's KB Lake generation. These are all Intel 7th generation KB Lake. And you've got NVIDIA 940MX graphics inside. 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a 512 gig SSD. So that's very well appointed. There's also a 1279 model with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. Keeps everything else the same there. So pretty nice machine for the price. Weight is 2 kilograms, which is 4.4 pounds. So, you know, as 15-inch laptops go, that's pretty light, but it's uh, hefty if you're going to be using this for art. Next, we have the Lenovo Yoga 720 15-inch, which is really in a different category in terms of performance. It, it, in some ways, doesn't belong with these other two. And I already have done a smackdown between the Spectre X360 and this Yoga 720 15-inch. So check out that if you want to see more in-depth differences there. So why doesn't this one belong? Well, the other two are... 15 watt Ultrabook dual core Core i7 CPUs. This one is a quad core 45 watt CPU. So you got twice the cores inside. This is more typical of a workstation level performance machine, like, like I said, the Dell XPS 15 and your entry level gaming laptops because it also has, it's optional, but the configuration we have has it. NVIDIA GTX 1050 graphics, well, with two gigabyte of GDDR5 VRAM. So a little skimpy on the VRAM there maybe, but still it's it's quite a performer here. That's what makes it so different from the others. Of course, there's going to be a drawback here, which is more heat, more noise, shorter battery life, even though Lenovo did a pretty good job on all counts. You just can't escape physics to a certain extent. So this one will get quite hot in the center area. On the keyboard side too, but particularly here, uh, this one will, will run the hottest. But that's when doing things like exporting video in Adobe Premiere, playing The Witcher 3, I mean, which is something you just can't even really do enjoyably on the other two laptops. So you're doing things here that you couldn't do as a consolation. It's available with a 1080p display, which is the unit that we have. And it's priced around $1,250. You know, Lenovo is always having sales, so their prices are very fluid. With a 4K display, it's around $1,500, which is about the same as the Spectre. So you're getting a faster machine. Again, the Spectre, though, is the battery life king. That thing runs like 9 to 10 hours on a charge, depending on what you're doing. That's with light use. If you're using it heavier, you'll still get about 8 hours of use. This is more like your 6 hour to 7 if you're really, you know, managing your power carefully. So there's the trade-offs there. Also, a metal chassis weighs the same remarkably as the Spectre, a little bit thicker. Spectre is around 18 millimeters. This one's about 19 millimeters. And now we have the newest kit on the block. This is the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro 15-inch. This one has Core i7, dual core, like I said, just like the Spectre, same CPU as the Spectre X360. But you have Radeon, AMD Radeon, that is 540 graphics with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. That's a better performer than the 940MX in the Spectre. It's also more power frugal. It's a more modern architecture. So the graphics will outperform the Spectre by a, a decent clip, but it's not nearly going to compete against that GTX 1050. So 
Depends what you need. This one's available with a 1080p display only. There is no 4K option on this. Now, if you watch my review of this, and you should, I make the argument that when you're holding a 15-inch laptop, because this is not a big old monitor where you're sitting far away from it, you're holding it pretty close to yourself. Seeing the difference between a good 1080p display, because display quality is more than just the resolution, and a 4K is pretty hard. And when you see the Spectre and this display showing the same desktop image, you'll see what I mean. It'd be hard pressed to tell which was which. But when you're doing photo editing, it that's when it's nice. You know, you, you zoom in and you're at 100% resolution on 4K before you know it, whereas you're zooming a whole lot longer on a 1080p display. This one sits in between the Spectre and the Yoga when it comes to battery life. It's about eight hours or so, which is quite good. This one, it stands out for having the best pen. This one uses Wacom EMR technology, the older, more established, and still best. Now, it has a, a pen, which is perfectly good, an S Pen in here. Now, I love the pen. I love the way it performs. It's just a little small to hold. So if you're wondering, after watching my review of this, the reason I recommend getting the optional Stetler Norris pen is because it's bigger, you know, or pencil. And it's quite light. It's lighter than an Apple pencil. This thing is awesome if you do artwork and if you're really into note-taking that feels as close to pen on paper as you could hope for. The, the strokes are just immediate. The, the ink just flows in a silky way. It's very precise, not just because it has a skinny tip. The technology is more precise that's used in Wacom EMR. So when I was trying to do the same painting, I was drawing a Norway lake scene and I was drawing a cabin, I had trouble with the Spectre X360's pen, which is a Entrig pen versus using the technology on the Samsung. I could do my art without the technology getting in the way better. Likewise, no taking is silky. Now, the Spectre is not bad when it comes to the pen. It's a decent Entrig has come a long way. It's not as new as the Surface Pro 2017 models Entrig stuff, but it's good. 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. There is no tilt support. The Samsung does have tilt support, which is nice if you're drawing mostly and painting digitally. No takers care less about that kind of thing. The Yoga has a Wacom AES digitizer, which is Wacom's newer and lower cost digitizer that they came up with to compete basically with Entry. And it's very good. In fact, I like it a little bit better than the Spectres. Lower initial activation force is required. You don't depress as hard. The pressure curves are a little bit more natural and linear. The pen is not included with the Yoga. The pen is included with the Spectre and with the Samsung. The Samsung Notebook 9 Pro 15 inch is also the lightest, and it's noticeable. It's about a half a pound lighter. It weighs 1.7 kilograms, which is 3.79 pounds. Every something that is a convertible and that you might actually want to use on your lap. I don't think most people are going to hold it in two hands. Still, it's kind of big and still kind of heavy for that. It makes a difference, and it makes it feel much more like a convertible and a, and a portable kind of design. So that's pretty nice, which gets into what do you want to do with your laptop, right? I pointed out this out in the Spectre X360 versus Yoga 720. Sure, the Yoga has more horsepower, and most people say, well, geez, you always should go for the more horsepower, shouldn't you? Well, no, it depends on what you need. If you're spending your day in OneNote and Photoshop and doing some occasional video editing, a dual core is perfectly fine, and you're going to get longer battery life and cooler running machine. So there you have it. But if you're that kind of person who is doing really he more heavy-duty stuff, you're doing 3D CAD work, you're doing ZBrush, you're doing video editing as often as we do it, which is to say professionally, then the quad core with the stronger dedicated graphics starts to make sense. So there you have it. The, the don't necessarily go for the fastest, most powerful machine if your needs really don't warrant that. You might want something that's lighter and more portable or has better battery life or it runs cooler and quieter. The Spectre is available only with a 4K display. The Samsung is available only with a 1080p display. The Lenovo is available with your choice of a 1080p or a 4K display. The 1080p display in on the Yoga is just okay. It's a competent display, and you can see the display metrics on screen there. But to look at it, it is less bright. It seems less colors pop less. It's just kind of eh. And it had the largest delta E. That was means it's the least color accurate. And even with color calibration, it's hard to get it really close and really right. The 4K display we don't have here. I have seen it. It is nicer looking, a little more colorful, a little bit more pop. Still not as good as the Spectre's display when it comes to, well, contrast and color pop, those sort of things. When it comes to ports, surprisingly, you think that the uh, 
the more powerhouse laptop, the Yoga 720, would have the most ports, but actually, no, it doesn't. It's funny. It doesn't even have a HDMI port or an SD card slot. Now, it does have a Thunderbolt 3 port on it, so you can use dongle adapters to get those. So that helps a little bit. The Spectre X360 is pretty well appointed. You have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, not just one, but one is used for charging, so there's that. And you have HDMI, and you have your USB 3.0 port on it. Just one USB 3.0 port. So get ready to use a little port splitter or something if you need more than one USB 3.0 peripheral, which many of us still do. The Samsung has a USB-C port that does not support Thunderbolt 3. That's kind of an ouch. I don't know if Samsung just not into Thunderbolt 3 with their laptops. They really should be. Uh, it has two USB 3.0 ports, which is nice though, a micro SD card slot and an HDMI port. So it's pretty well appointed in the port department as long as you're not worrying about Thunderbolt 3. There's that. All three machines have 16 gigs of RAM in the configurations that we've got. The Yoga should theoretically be able to go to 32 gigs because it has two slots. The HP has two slots, but I'm not sure that the motherboard supports 32. I have not opened it up and tried to do that. Samsung has its 16 gigs of RAM soldered on board. They all have M2 SSDs, and you can upgrade those yourself if you want to a higher capacity. PCIe on the Yoga and the HP SATA interface on the Samsung out of the box. Backlit keyboards, of course they all have it. Good Wi-Fi, yep. Now in terms of keyboards, I like the HP and the Samsung about equally well. They're both low travel, but very good keyboards. The Yoga line from Lenovo, they say they're best keyboards for the ThinkPad line. I love ThinkPad keyboards. The Yoga's is a little bit mushy feeling. It's not bad, but it's a little bit mushy. Speakers, the Yoga wins on that. It has two watt speakers versus the 1.5 watts on our competitors here, and it sounds louder, and it's got pretty good fullness. HP's sound is decent, but not as full as you might think, given the fancy sound setup that they've got going here, but it has a little bit more bass than the Samsung. The Samsung sounds a little thin. It has good volume, but not much bass at all. Trackpads on these, my preference would be Samsung number one, HP number two, Yoga number three. The Samsung and the HP have a Windows Hello camera for facial recognition login. The Lenovo goes with a fingerprint scanner on the keyboard deck. And it's time for the Charger Smackdown. Sure, why not, right? Unsurprisingly, the Lenovo Charger is the largest charger because it has to charge a quad-core and higher-end dedicated graphics. HP in the middle wins for prettiest charger on the market, perhaps. Look at that. It's awful pretty. It's also kind of big. It's a 95-watt charger, and that's because the 940MX NVIDIA graphics are not as power frugal, so it actually needs a bit more charging. So it sits in between. And then we have the Samsung, the smallest. It's like the chargers they've been using for years with their laptops. It's a 60-watt charger. It's the smallest and the lightest going along with being the smallest and the lightest of the three notebooks. So there you have it, a three-way smackdown, and there, as ever, isn't a clear winner when you're talking about really very good machines. Each of them has their strong points. For those of you who are primarily interested in art, are you hardcore note-takers, like I said, the kind of people who know what a Stettler pencil is versus some other nice ink pens that are on the market and you care about silky note-taking, if you're an artist, the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro is the one for you because that Wacom EMR digitizer is just dreamy. It is noticeably better if you're in tune to those kind of things. If you're looking for the best all-arounder, something that's portable, that has Thunderbolt 3, that has a 4K display that's really gorgeous looking, it's the HP Spectre X360 15-inch model. And if you're one of those people who needs a super-duper powerhouse, a Dell XPS 15 level of performance, or even introductory gaming laptop level of performance, but in the unusual convertible design, because you don't usually see those married together, and you'd like to have that pen functionality too, well, then there's the Yoga 720. It's going to get hotter, it's going to get louder, it doesn't have the battery life of the other two, but it's a pretty darn fine machine too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.